INEC suspends declaration of a winner in the Anambra governorship election pending the conduct of election in Iheala local government area. Vice President Yebi Oshibajo represents Nigeria at third ECOWAS Extraordinary Summit in Accra. Search and rescue operation winds down as the Ikoi building collapses. Well, good morning, Nigeria. Today we shall review the Anambra governorship election. After weeks of anxiety and apprehension arising from the initial security challenges and sit-at-home orders, the Anambra State Governorship election held over the weekend came with a mixed grill of occurrences and a yet-to-be-determined outcome, Kingsley. That's right, uh, Jumai. Now, as the uh, state uh, coalition officer for the Anambra Governorship election, rather, that's the state returning officer, for the Anambra election, Professor Florence will be uh, indicated in the early hours of uh, today. The uh, final announcement has been suspended uh, pending the conduct of the election in Ihiala, local government area, where election did not take place. And supplementary election for Ihiala, local government area, has been selected to hold on Tuesday 9th, November 2021. Ihiala is the only one of Anambra's 21 local government areas where elections could not hold as results were announced for all other local government areas. Now, Professor Obi, that's the uh, returning officer, noted that it became imperative uh, to uh, bring Ihiala local government at par with the other local governments where elections had held before any valid declaration of a winner could be made or further action taken on the basis of extant laws. And she appealed to party agents and the people of the state to support INEC during Tuesday's supplementary election to ensure that the election is brought to a satisfactory conclusion for the good of the people of Anabra and Nigeria at large. And uh, just as you indicated, it is indeed a mixed grill uh, for the state as a good number of voters showed up quite early for the election at uh, polling units across the state on Saturday, indicating their readiness to elect a new governor. But the fact that the election did not hold in here, and the fact that also uh, the election kicked off late in a number of uh, locations, plus reported irregularities, all of these have uh, tended to impact on the final outcome. And we're also made to understand that the logistics that were made uh, for the election were not fully deployed to all locations in Ihiala. That's yes, quite unfortunate, Kinsley, and this means that the 18 candidates in the Anambra governorship election and their supporters will have to wait some more for the winner of the polls to be decided by ANEC, even though the All Progressives Grand Alliance is maintaining a lead in most of the results already announced by ANEC. Well, that's true, Jumai. Now, another prominent glitch that was observed uh, which tended, of course, to also take some shine of the election was the malfunctioning of the biomodal accreditation system, that's BIVAS. Uh, the machines were deployed by ANEC for the first time in a governorship election. Uh, it had uh, used it in a by-election somewhere in Delta. And the whole purpose was to facilitate accreditation and voting. But reports indicated that the BIVAS machines in a number of polling units failed to authenticate uh, the voters as well as get their uh, facial recognition, making uh, the process uh, cumbersome, if not otherwise uh, difficult. But uh, there was inevitably, uh, arising from that, uh, an extension of voting uh, period by INEC. But what stalled the election in the whole of Ihiala local government area is a question for INEC to answer in spite of the huge investments in men and logistics for the election. Also, the results for Orumba local government of the state is being contested as the coalition officer for the area raised an alarm that he signed the results under duress. Kinsley. No question about that. I mean, it was uh, live on television yes. indicating uh, what happened. 
and uh, many questions will arise as to uh, what also happened to the tens of thousands of security personnel who were deployed to uh, man every square inch of Anambra in the course of the election. Where were the security officials uh, at the time uh, when the returning officer said it was uh, under duress, also being tear gassed uh, by elements? In general, uh, the, the election, of course, held on that peaceful atmosphere in general, but voter apathy uh, was a key feature. As said, there are indications that uh, probably you have uh, just about anything between 10 and 50 percent uh, voter turnout. There are over 2.5 million registered voters in the state, and the results that have been declared so far uh, will tend to show that uh, the number of voters who came out of fewer than half a million. Juma? And the people of Anambra State and the security agencies must, however, be commended for the peaceful conduct of the polls, even though there are calls for investigation and of some isolated instances of hijack of election materials with a view to prosecuting the culprits. We have assembled a panel of guests, including our correspondent on ground in Anambra, to review the governorship polls in our conversation segment later in the program. You're welcome to Good Morning Nigeria. I am Jumai Yusuf. And I'm King Soyo Sadolov. I join my colleague Jumai to also welcome you to the program live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. In the course of the program, our complimentary segments will also come on, this including Super Review and Business. Right now, here is Nolene Belame with the highlights of the morning news. Good morning, Nolene. Good morning, Kingsley and Jumai. Good morning, Nigeria, and here is the morning news. The returning officer for the Anambra State Governorship election, Professor Florence Obi, has declared the election inconclusive. The state coalition officer suspended the declaration of a winner pending the conduct of election in Ihela local government area where election did not hold. Supplementary election for Ihela has been slated to hold on Tuesday, 9th November 2021. Section 26 of the Electoral Act envisages the postponement of an election where there is a cogent and verifiable reason to do so, especially threat of breach of the peace. One major reason for not deploying for election in Iyala, local government area on Saturday, 6th November, is due to security threats, which led to staffing and transportation constraints, among others. Finally, Clause 47 of the revised regulation and guidelines for the conduct of elections provides that supplementary elections shall be conducted where the commission due to logistical challenges is unable to deploy on election day. Given the foregoing, it becomes imperative to bring Iyala local government area apart with the other 20 local government areas in this election before we can make a valid declaration or take any further action based on the extant law. Therefore, I, Professor Florence Banku Obi, in my capacity as returning officer for this election, hereby announce the suspension of the process of collation of results and declaration of a winner until the supplementary election is held in the 326 polling units in the Iyala local government area of the state. I have conferred with the commission, being the body responsible for fixing the date of the election, and the commission has decided that the supplementary election will take place on Tuesday, 9th November 2021. After hours of deliberations at the third ECOWAS Extraordinary Summit in Accra, Ghana, on the political situation in Guinea and Mali, 
Members of the ECOWAS community maintain their stand that coup d'etat is unacceptable and called on the international community and other regional groups to support the sanctions imposed on those trying to truncate democratic process in change of government. The Vice President, Yemi Oshibaju, represented Nigeria's President, Muhammadu Buhari, at the meeting. Search and rescue operation at the Ikoi building collapse is at low ape as heavy-duty vehicles cut away the rubble. Few responders and security personnel are still keeping vigil at the site. I'm mostly responsible for building collapse, structural failure, using uh, substandard materials. Majorly, when people are having their concrete mixing, they do not consider the real ratio, the accepted ratio for a particular uh, concrete mixing. 86 new cases of COVID-19, including one death, have been confirmed by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control within the last 24 hours, bringing Nigeria's caseload to 212,713. Among the new cases, Kaduna recorded 41, Lagos 24, Oshun 10, Bauchi 6, Ekiti and Ondo 2 cases each, while Edo recorded one case. 204,379 treated cases have so far been discharged, while the death toll is now 2,906. That's the morning news for now. Good morning. Nigeria continues with Kinsley and Jumai after this break. I am Nolin Ebel Ame. Good morning. This present government has done a lot on the train modernization. They came in and completed the Abuja Kaduna, and we have nine stations there five stopping stations and four crossing stations, making nine. And when we started in 2016, we started with uh, two trips, then we later moved on to eight trips. And we are talking about moving to 14 trips a day, and uh, we have been able to send 10 DMUs, 10 coaches and two locomotives new. We have 12 stations on the Takbele Wari line. It's about 312 kilometer length of track and it's uh, over 35 years old. And uh, the government came and took it up, finished the track, built modern station and the stations are finished. Working on the signaling, we all hope to start uh, the commercial operation at the, by the end of uh, September. When times are tough, we know that as a mother, one thing you should never compromise on is your family's oral health because they deserve the best. Oral-B, all-round protection. It's great value. It protects your mouth from harmful bacteria and also protects you against tooth holes and gum problems which can lead to tooth loss. It strengthens your family's teeth and gives them all-round protection. So remember, protect their future. Oral-B for healthier, stronger teeth in just one week. How to make a perfect bowl of love? A perfect blend of taste that brings every ingredient to life. The fusion of different spices. The unique aroma that rejuvenates your senses. The heartwarming deliciousness. 
and the satisfaction that comes from every bite, which makes you say, hmm, I love my Indomie. We are all Nigerians. Against all odds, we shall and must remain united. We may have our challenges, our problems, and setbacks. However, together, we shall overcome them all. What doesn't break us shall make us stronger. This is the mindset that shall bring peace, progress, and prosperity to our beloved country. Do not let tribal and religious sentiments govern how you think, act, or feel. Don't be influenced by those who want to destroy our precious national unity. Everybody who is a Nigerian is your brother and your sister. This is the mindset of the new Nigeria. It is also the mindset that we must all adopt. Let us support each other in creating the Nigeria of our dreams. This message is from the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. Lagos, are you ready? It is the Lagos Mega Healing and Deliverance Crusade as God's servants. Dr. Pastor Paul and Dr. Mrs. Becky Paul and Nete will be live in the city of excellence, Lagos, Tim, the God of all possibilities, ministering in songs, Sinan, Nathaniel Bassi, Dr. Alabi, Yossi Oyeka, Deborah Paul and Nete, and a host of other music ministers happening live at the main ball of Testing Malogu Stadium. Wednesday, 10 to Saturday, 13th November 2021. Time, morning session 7 p.m., evening session 5 p.m. Special future include Southwest Ministers Conference, Friday 12th and Saturday, 13th November 2021, 7 p.m. at the indoor stadium of Teslin Balogun Stadium, Surinary Lagos. Don't be told. You're watching Good Morning Nigeria on the network service of the NTA. Business news is next with Comfort Amadou. As world leaders focus attention on ways to achieve net zero carbon emission by 2060 at the ongoing United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP26, in the Scottish city of Glasgow, stakeholders underscored the need to work with relevant institutions to adequately drive the action. Institutions who have recognized that need are now supporting pure gas projects, putting in green bonds, ensuring that they are supporting infrastructure, ensuring that the midstream where our industries are going to be growing are also supported. By the time we've implemented the CIA for two to three years, we can always make changes through the annual finance bill. So it's not a perfect bill, but it's a good way to start. Position Nigeria as a center for African markets. Meanwhile, key players in the Nigerian capital market are drawing the attention of the government to the capital markets to finance capital projects and infrastructure in the country, as they insist that there are huge opportunities for the Petroleum Industry Act in the capital market, especially with the coming on board of NMPC Limited and companies under the new act. By providing platforms for businesses and individuals to raise capital through innovation, diversified products and services, enabling regulatory environment, which will in turn unlock value. Uh, the mobilization of savings and investments so that we do not have a situation where, uh, you know, we do, uh, investors do not have enough instruments to invest in, in our capital markets. They also advocated proper legislation for the capital market and the areas that require amendment and review to enable the capital market thrive. Investors are expected to take position in dividend-paying stocks with attractive pricing as they monitor the move of yields in the fixed income market and other macroeconomic developments with Business News Comfort Amodu. Thank you very much, Comfort, for the business package on Good Morning Nigeria. Next, it's Newspaper Review.
and our newspaper reviewer by Atobis in the studio. Good morning, Bayo. You're welcome. Thank you, Jume. Good morning. You look good refreshed. Morning, I hope you had a good weekend. Yes. Good Rest morning, Kesley. Good morning, Nigeria. All right, Bayo. Good to see you. Uh, we have the leadership and the punch newspapers to uh, review this morning. Mm. The leadership, the lead story is, of course, on the uh, Anambra governorship election. ANEC declares Anambra governorship poll inconclusive. ANEC declares Anambra governorship poll inconclusive to hold supplementary election in Ihiala, local government area, tomorrow. ABGA wins in 18 local government uh, areas and party lords. President Muhammad Buhari for non-interference. CSOs advocate use of technology in future elections. And uh, above that uh, lead story, uh, the headline, you have freight cost from China rises to $4,000 over port congestion. Other headlines say on the front page, Kaduna begins crackdown on beggars and hawkers. That's on page 8 in greater detail. Asupane clears Futo. Okay, it's Patamin's elevation. That's page six. Yuni Abuja kidnapped victims, recount ordeal. Yes, quite an unfortunate situation there. Let's go to the Punch newspaper. Above <coughs> the masthead, we have banks, insurance firms raking 22.6 billion naira from MDAs. You find details on page 34. FG meets customs as 566.00 NT of India, Thailand, Rice, Arrive, Bene, Republic. Details on page 34. Senate knocks Code of Conduct Tribunal for ignoring corruption cases from Code of Conduct Bureau. you find details on page 22. Politicians jostling for 2023 eyeing uncertain future. That is coming from Pastor Adeboe. And by the side piece of the Punch newspaper, building collapse, Lagos records zero conviction as 213 die in seven years. With kickers, tribunal blames weak enforcement of regulations and corruption. Two more bodies removed, recovered in Ikoyi. Rescue efforts stop today. You find details on page 4 and 20. And the headlines we have on the Punch newspaper, Alambura governorship poll, Saludo set to win, leads in 17 local governments. APC alleges rigging. With riders, PDP, YPP win in one local government each. APC yet to win. We won't accept result. Abga rigged, claims APC. And um, the picture story you see there, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo during the emergency echoes extraordinary session of the authority of heads of state and government on the political situations in the republics of Guinea and Mali in Accra. APC tackles Tambwal over 28 billion naira fresh loan request hike. Details on page 23. DSS detaining Nyako's ex-CSO over 80 million naira property dispute mm -hmm. with ex-governor. Page 20. Nigerians with missing vaccination card need a feed Police report. You find details on page 24. At the bottom plate of the Punch newspaper, Salami reports Magu on half pay 16 months after suspension. Details on page 8. We threat for hours, fed like slaves. Uni Abuja kidnapped victims narrate their ordeal in the hands of their kidnappers. We find details on page 4 and 5. Fantami Professorship. Asu Panel Giris Futu Registrar recommends litigation. You find details on page 22. And by the side piece of the picture story, you see results of the Anambra governorship election uh, as it continues to come in. Bio. Thank you. Well, let's start with Anambra election. The ANEC has declared Saturday's Anambra governorship election inconclusive. The returning officer, Professor Florence, will be declared, uh, I hereby suspend coalition and announcement of any results on the elections uh, conducted in 320 polling units in the Hiala local government area. The supplementary election 
will take place on Tuesday, 9th of November. For the record so far conducted, uh, Abga candidate has polled 103,946 votes. He's followed by the PDP candidate who polled 51,322. The candidate for the All Progressive Congress has registered 42,942 votes. There were 246,638 registered voters and 241,090 were accredited. Total valid votes cast so far was 229,521. Rejected votes were 7,841. Uh, in spite of all apprehensions over an Anambra governorship election, the election was adjoined uh, most peaceful. Uh, the elections were required to have commenced between 8.30 and ended 2 p.m. But most polling units had election comments. There were some that delays uh, occurred. There were some technical uh, glitches, uh, especially with the biometric voting machines used for accreditation. It was required to identify voters at three levels. First, either by fingerprint or personal photograph of yours or by a barcode at the back of, of the voter's card. Mm -hmm. uh, instances uh, occurred that the, the BMAS machine uh, caused some, some delays. Uh, in fact, it turned out that uh, there was no there were no election in here at the local government at all, and that is why there's going to be this supplementary election. The returning officer uh, directed computations of results from polling units and registration areas uh, were looked at and for acceptance. This was in Orumba, where there was some okay. some little confusion. Uh, the interesting thing was that there was initial confusion. The resident electoral commissioner had actually announced that those who couldn't vote should return on Sunday and vote. But by the end of the day, the procedure was followed. Anybody who was on the line and queuing to vote was allowed to vote as late as they voted. And so at the end of the day, there was no need for people to come out and vote on Sunday. Uh, all things being equal, the supplementary election in the Hiala will end the conclusion of the story. The other hanging story, about the rescue of the two professors, one registrar and three family members of the University of Abuja who were abducted. They were rescued Friday morning. Professor Obana, who was one of the, those who was uh, uh, abducted, uh, said they were made to walk several stretch day and night. They were blindfolded during daytime. Uh, they were forced to take gari and unclean water the second day they were fed with leftover of yams roasted from what the bandits have stolen from people's farm. Uh, the professor of economy uh, re remarked that they were fed like slaves. The criminals had demanded 300 million ransom, but no ransom was paid. And eventually, when some of them were arrested, they demanded for a swap of some of their colleagues. The Federal uh, Territory Police Public Relations Officer, Josephine Adi, says that there was neither a ransom that was paid, and uh, the, those of them have been arrested. In fact, yesterday, in Niger State, Mina, <clears throat> one of the persons that were arrested, it was found out from investigation that he had built a house. He had been involved in this criminal activity for a long time. He has built a house. I saw and them demolishing house, the house. The house had been demolished. Mm, but demolished. from all indications, the information filtering to the person that were abducted indicated that they had come all the way from Zamfara to carry out their activities. And they were even threatening to walk their victims across to Zamfara until they, they paid their ransom. Well, or at least they have been rescued now and they have probably been returned to their families. On the uh, collapsed to, uh, 21 story mm. building, the governor of Lagos State was there on Saturday. Mm -hmm. He was accompanied by the APC leader, Mola Ahmed Tinobu, and Governor of Nasarawa, yes. Abdullah yes. Esule. At that point in time, he reported that uh, 42 bodies have so far been recovered. <coughs> As at, uh, on Saturday, two other bodies were recovered, bringing the total to 44. But the punch has also done the background, and he's saying that uh, since 2007 up to date, there have been 145 building collapse in Lagos. It adds that fewer than 213 <coughs> persons have also died from seven major building collapse in seven years. And here's what the paper is saying. It said, Lagos State had taken possession of the building sites and threatened sanctions, but there has been no conviction. Mm. In 2014, uh, it will recall that there was a guest house that collapsed at the Synagogue Church of All Nations. It claimed 115 lives. Mm. The, coroner, the coroner ruled that the church uh, should be prosecuted so far. 
no church has been preferred. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's um, unfortunate. I mean, the tragedy at Ikui and the many uh, instances of uh, structural failures in Lagos. But just one item of curiosity. Yes. Uh, it's unfortunate that they have uh, pulled out some 44 bodies now from the rubble. Mm. Uh, 15 persons have survived. That gives you some 59 uh, persons who were at the site, and we hope that there were no other persons. I'm just wondering, uh, in the course of rescuing the 15 or pulling out the bodies, have they found any hard hat, what you call a helmet, that is supposed to be one of the protective gears you wear at a construction site? At the construction site. Because sometimes it's possible that uh, some of the victims were struck on the head by falling debris. Mm -hmm. And if you had a hard heart, then it might have, uh, might have helped. Help, yes. yes. So it, it's impact, part of the yes. protocols, part of the protocols that, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's just typical sometimes of us. You say, no, 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 it doesn't matter. It just, it just wants to go in and come out. Mm. And you don't follow uh, the, the, the right procedure. The when you are told, when you are told to comply with uh, simple uh, safety procedures, and then she'll be, what do you mean? Do you know who I am? <laughs> the question is now, they say it's zero conviction. <coughs> Unless heads begin to roll, yes. things like this will the not stop in this country. The list of persons have increased to over 49. But what happens? At sites, there are no list of persons who are working on the site. I think that should be part of the protocol. Any construction site, at the, every day, people who come there should have a list that should be provided. That will be very handy in case of such eventuality. I, just, I also hope that the uh, pro panel has uh, collected material evidence for their investigation because the debris is now being evacuated. <clears throat> I believe, you know, being taken to a land refill site uh, and, and so on and so forth, and you will find scavengers also coming around, mm. uh, either pin the iron rods, iron rods or something. But I just hope so that they can test the strength of the materials and then uh, see what happens. But it, it, you know, that's, this is not a matter of maintenance or charm party. It is not just the criminal aspect of it uh, that y you, one will raise concerns. There are also uh, civil liabilities. Mm -hmm. Civil liabilities. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'll give you an example. I, I'm sure this is not related to construction. In 1999, mm -hmm. the son of uh, former U.S. President John F. Kennedy, uh, that's uh, John Kennedy Jr. Mm -hmm. himself, mm -hmm took off in an airplane. He was a pilot with his wife and his sister-in-law. No, That's the wife sister, of the sister. Yeah. Yes. And they were flying from New Jersey to Martha's Vineyard. Terrible weather at night, and the plane crashed into the Atlantic. Cause of the crash was ultimately identified as uh, the inexperience of the pilot. The bodies were uh, recovered, and then they were, of course, then buried at sea. But the families of the uh, co-passengers sued the estate of uh, John F. Kennedy, uh, John F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, the initial claim was for about $20 million. They eventually got, I think, about $15 million from the estate. It, 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 that's the, the purpose of the, of the suit was to compensate for wrongful death. Mm -hmm. So when you have things like this happen and so on and so forth, I imagine that a construction site like that ought to have been insured. So you call in your insurance mm. if, the, if the need arises, and persons have suffered injuries. Is it, are you going to doctor the person? You go and put iodine somewhere, they put plaster, then you go. When you talk about insurance, <laughs> does that apply here? <laughs> well, the, the Nigerian uh, one association, Nigeria Nigeria system, architects yeah. mm. have advocated for three levels of panels. They say there's the one that has been appointed. They describe it as a, a, a political panel. Mm. They want a professional panel that would comprise of uh, experts. And the third should be a coroner's, uh, uh, it was a coroner's panel. He said that will be able to give a comprehensive report about what happened there. Hi, uh, Well, mm -hmm. thank you very much for being around today. Thank you, we'll too. See you again tomorrow. All right, you're watching Good Morning Nigeria on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. We'll take a short break now when we return. We'll be discussing the Anambra election. It's still standing on uh, one foot, uh, which is to say it's inconclusive but uh, there are clear issues uh, to interrogate. Well, the housing solution we have developed is a 
multifaceted one. Uh, first, we have tried to lead a program to build what we think will be an acceptable and hopefully affordable housing type based on surveys we did in 2015-2016 and construction that started in 2017 and that's going on in 34 states as the national housing program. This message is from the Federal Minister of Information and Culture. How to make a perfect bowl of love? A perfect blend of taste that brings every ingredient to life. The fusion of different spices. The unique aroma that rejuvenates your senses. The heartwarming deliciousness. And the satisfaction that comes from every bite, which makes you say, Hmm, I love my Indomie. Dear compatriots, our country can be as great as we want. Let us all commit ourselves to its greatness. We must be willing to set aside our differences, unite and stay as one. In our expansive landmass, human and material resources, and plurality lies our strength. Let our challenges lead us to rediscover our common ground, and together, let's find solutions. This will take some time, so it requires patience, tolerance, and forgiveness from every one of us. Let all hands come on deck to protect and transform our country. Let us unite and see each other, not as adversaries, but as brothers and sisters. Together, we can build a better Nigeria for ourselves and for the next generations. This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency, NOA, with support from Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. It's still good morning, Nigeria, on the NTA. And to begin our conversation segment, which is a review of the Anambra governorship election, let's listen to the returning officer for the Anambra state governorship election, Professor Florence Obi. the Electoral Act envisages the postponement of an election where there is a cogent and verifiable reason to do so, especially threat of breach of the peace. One major reason for not deploying for election in Iyala, local government area on Saturday, 6th November, is due to security threats which led to staffing and transportation constraints, among others. Finally, Clause 47 of the Revised Regulation and Guidelines for the Conduct of Elections provides that supplementary elections shall be conducted where the Commission, due to logistical challenges, is unable to deploy on election day. Given the foregoing, it becomes imperative to bring Iyala local government area a par with the other 20 local government areas in this election before we can make a valid declaration or take any further action based on the extant law. Therefore, I, Professor Florence, Banku Obi, in my capacity as returning officer for this election, hereby announce the suspension of the process of collation of results and declaration of a winner until the supplementary election is held in the 326 polling units in Indiana local government area of the state. I have confirmed with the Commission, being the body responsible for fixing the date of election. And the Commission has decided that the supplementary election will take place on Tuesday, 9th November 2021.
All right, uh, that was the returning officer for the Anambra governorship election, indicating the state of affairs after the results from 20 local government areas uh, were announced. So Ihiala is still outstanding. We have indicated that, of course, in our news bulletins. And we have guests uh, to uh, discuss the outcome so far of the Anambra uh, governorship election. Uh, we have two guests with us here in the studios, but first, let's go to Oka, the Anambra State Capital, where our correspondent, uh, Chuku Nonso Waboze, uh, is standing by. You can see him there on the right side of uh, your split screen. Uh, Chuku Nonso, well, we would have said uh, this is the morning after, but uh, it is still inconclusive. What is the mood like uh, in and around Oka, where you are? Thank you, Kingsley. The atmosphere here is very calm. Uh, the, the people are going about their lawful business. Although we are having uh, skeletal, although, although, although we are having skeletal movements, knowing uh, uh, fully well of what happens uh, inside of the country every morning, but others are coming out to do their lawful business. Uh, here is calm. The atmosphere is Hello, can you hear me, Kingsley? Uh, Chukunong, so we can hear you, but uh, there seems to be a lot of noise from the traffic uh, where you are, where, where you are standing. I believe that's uh, on a highway. Uh, perhaps if you if you could find a more uh, convenient spot uh, so that. The uh, ambience is much better because your mic is uh, uh, omni directional. That's to say, it picks up sounds from all locations. Uh, if that is fine, uh, just proceed and, and tell us some more uh, in terms of everybody's going about their normal business and so on and so forth. Well, today is Monday. Is there a lockdown or the uh, suspension of the lockdown by IPOB continues to hold? In theory, in theory, it, it, it is said to have been suspended, but in practice here, it is somehow being observed. Because today being Monday, right here at uh, Unisic Junction, the usual beehive of activity, people going to their offices and other people going to work and doing other business. But as it, we are witnessing now, it is not what it used to be. So, you, we can say, we can say that partially the, 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 the sit at home order is still effective here in Oka, the capital city. Although nobody is being harassed, but the willingness to come out and do what you're supposed to do is what is lacking on the people because we are short of security provisions here. But on the side of the people to come out and do their legitimate business is what we are not seeing. Okay, Chukuno, so um, it's quite commendable that the election went peacefully. As preparations for Iyala, you know, starts today for tomorrow, how prepared are the people of the local government to come out, vote their candidates? Okay, we, we, we were able to speak, thank you, Chukuno. We were able to speak with uh, party agents uh, early this morning when we were still at the INEC uh, Speculation Center. The the the, the 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 can you hear me? Can you hear me? <coughs> the, the the party agents the party agents promised to move in and mobilize their their their, their members and their supporters because the, the, the impact of the election in Ihiala will be significant to whoever emerges as governor with over with over uh, hundred and forty thousand registered voters, so the stake is still high and they promise to move in and use the limited time they have in mobilizing their supporters and also see if they can move other voters in their favor. So they are ready and I think that by now they should be mobilizing uh, uh, people and canvassing in, 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 in the best way they can to get the needed vote in India. So we've had the official explanation by the returning officer. But from a reporter's point of view, what happened in Ihiala? 
that elections did not hold. And by the way, indicate to us the geography of the area. How far is Ihiala from Oka? Uh, so whatever was happening there, why could it not have been stopped? and Oka, it's uh, over 30 or 45 minutes drive from the city center here, the capital city, to Ihiala. Then when you talk about the photography and uh, uh, where Ihiala is located, Ihiala, uh, as record have shown, is one of the flashpoints where the security agencies are having issues with uh, these uh, non-state actors. You know? So it's very, very volatile, if, if, if we might use that, uh, that, that word. However, uh, it's still uh, a, 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 a local government under, uh, under the jurisdiction of Anambra State. So whatever that happens, I think that the security agents can come up uh, with uh, a, a better approach towards uh, 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 getting the needed result out uh, of, of that local government. In terms of the, uh, uh, I wasn't deployed to Ihiala, but my colleague who covered here confirmed that there was nothing like an election there. Everything couldn't hold. It's like things falling apart, the center couldn't hold. Uh, uh, Chukunon, so just before we uh, we'll let you go in the meantime, uh, what is the reaction of the voters to the outcome of the election so far pending, of course, the uh, final results uh, from Ihiala. Do you get a sense that they are saying, look, this is their choice, even though we know that uh, the uh, turnout has been somewhat dismal? Uh, for, them, for, the, for the voters, uh, they are still, they, they, they are, the, the people that came out to, to vote on Saturday, Though the voter outcome, the voter apathy, as uh, Anambra State is known for, also played out. But those that came out to come and cast their ballots were, 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 were enthusiastic of the whole process. Why those who were able to talk with after the election, the stage at which the election is now pending the outcome of the uh, 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 results, they are still uh, happy with the process in general. So they are hoping that by tomorrow, uh, the 9th of uh, November 2021, the whole process will be concluded where the states uh, will be the will be Okay, Chikuno, you know, so there are, you know, as usual, our elections in Nigeria, there are disputes already from other political parties, you know, insinuating that the election was rigged. And um, what, uh, from the feelers we are having from the voters, what is it telling you? Well, uh, for the voters, they, they, they believe they've, they've spoken through their ballots. And from the results we're having, we see we've been able to cover 20 local governments. That means they've, they've done well. When you talk about uh, the issue of uh, alleging uh, election rigging of our parties, uh, uh, the party agents, I think, during uh, the, the, the coalition uh, early this morning, when the uh, party agents of the main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, and the all opposition of the FDC, they didn't sign the, 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 the result sheet of the collated 20 local government uh, uh, areas. The result announced by the Chief Recording Officer, Professor Torrance, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Calabar. So that goes a long way to, to, to send a signal, maybe. They are still considering other options other than what uh, is being declared. So we will still wait. We know that in Nigeria, after uh, the stage of being at the ballot, being at the polling station, the next most of times is shifting the attention to the law courts. But we are still watching to see how the political uh, parties uh, take the result. Though it's still inconclusive, we never can tell who is the law courts or not. But there is that feeling of uh, the election being rigged allegedly. All right, our correspondent uh, Chuku Nonso Mwaboise uh, joining us from Oka, the Anambra state capital, is at the 
uh, usually busy uh, Unizik Junction in Oka. Chukunon, so thank you very much for being with us. Uh, if need be, of course, we'll uh, have you uh, rejoin us for uh, today's program or, or on other uh, news programs. Chukunon, so one boy is a NTS correspondent in Oka, joining us there. Now back to the studios here. In Abuja, we have two guests with us. Let's welcome Mr. Victor Aluko, who is Director of Voter Education and Publicity of the Independent National Electoral Commission. Mr. Aluko, delighted to have you this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Also here with us, a uh, regular guest on Good Morning Nigeria. He was in Oka. We had him uh, last week. Ezenwa Wago, Chairman Partners for Electoral Reforms. Ezenwa, welcome back from Ihiala. No, oh, sorry, welcome <laughs> back from uh, Thank you very much. All right. Let's just go ahead. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, let's begin with um, uh, Victor Aluko, uh, the uh, INEC Director of um, Voter Education and Publicity. Anambra election inconclusive. Uh, back to the old uh, story. But this time, of course, uh, the challenge is beyond uh, INEC. What is uh, INEC's uh, interim assessment of uh, the process and procedure for the Anambra election? Uh, the situation is that as an electoral uh, body, I like manage the situation the way it should. What happened was that the returning officer simply postponed the, uh, the, the collation and declaration of uh, the winner. Pending uh, the time, we'll conduct election in here, the local government, where due to security threats, we had staffing and logistics constraints, and we could not deploy. And of course, she rightly relied on the relevant sections of the Constitution on the Electoral Act and the Commission's guidelines for the election. And uh, in order to be fair too, we need to bring Ihela at par with the other 20 local governments before we can move forward, move further. That's the simple situation now. And we are making arrangements to conduct that election tomorrow in Ihiala and conclude the process. And of course, we need the support of an understanding of people of Anambra State for us to conclude this uh, election and move forward. Okay, as in one more go. I'll just, uh, to my if you don't yes. mind, yeah. I just started to drill into the uh, outstanding local governments. Ihiala is one of the uh, 21 local governments in uh, Anambra. What is the number of registered voters we are dealing with and what is the margin of lead uh, between the, the first candidate uh, and uh, the second candidate uh, in, in this election so far from the 20 local governments uh, announced to warrant uh, a supplementary election in Ihiala? Well, the, if we are talking about issues of margin of lead now, currently the margin of lead is a uh, is 52,624 votes between the, Abga, the candidate of ABGA and the candidate of uh, PDP. You know, the candidate of ABGA scored 103,946 votes, while the candidate of PDP scored 51,222 votes. When you do the arithmetic, you that the, the margin of lead is 52,624. Now, the total votes uh, <coughs> in Ihela is 148,407. Mathematically, you know, the margin of lead is lower than the vote than the outstanding votes in Ihiala. So, to be fair, we need to conclude our election in Ihiala before we can move forward. Okay, we'll come to talk about other issues too that you know came up during the course of the election in the past two days. Let's join Ezon Wanwago, his chairman partners for electoral reform. So you are in Anambra. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's have your assessment of how it went down. Well, I, I think that, um, like someone has said, I think it's good that we we are shifting from uh, election will not hold to uh, interrogating the administration of the election. I think that's a leap, uh, understanding the circumstances in which the Anambra um, 2021 election held. Um, you would realize that INEC suffered some arson uh, attack on their facilities. The security agencies in the state, in the, in the Navy, also suffered NYSC. And these are the 
these, if you if you check, these are stakeholders within the election um, environment. So the the message was that we we want to send a message to the different, you know, um, offic the of those who officiate election. So if that um, fear was overcome, and then we are launching now to interrogating accreditation and and uh, voting collation of results. If results in 20 local governments have been collated, um, I think that's, that's a pass mark. We run uh, a law, a law, our elections are law determined. The law determines our election, unlike in, in other crimes where it's not necessarily the law. The, the election management body decides its own rules. And so everything that, that was holding us down now is to fulfill the requirements of the law. Otherwise, uh, the Anambra election held peacefully. The hitches that we already have overflowed, that of the, the technology challenges that we faced, transportation challenges that were faced, um, it, it, it cast a lot of slow on on our ability to gloat right now, but, but the, that is temporary. I think in the next few days, we should be able to conclude uh, that election. But um, my, my concern is uh, service delivery and outcomes. And that's where I, I've, I've, I think that um, in, in auditing the 2021 election, we should pay a lot of attention. If we deployed 34,000 policemen, 20,000 NSDC <laughs> officials, God knows the number of DSS, soldiers, and we still could not conduct elections in Ihiala. Somebody has to tell us why. There is just not going to be. You see, we paper over these things. It's not, and that's what we do each time. Anambra, Idemili not 2013. We, we are held for two weeks. Because we, 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 we don't have to forget. Almost everything that is playing in this election in significant way happened in 2013. Late opening of polls, the challenges and the rest of them. For two weeks, election could not be done in the day million. Not. So, and the reason why that will continue to happen is because people who are paid, people who have responsibility, we will leave this election not talking about the 30, that 34,000, 20,000 army and the rest of them. If, you, if, if people cannot go to Ihiala in the midst of all of this, I expect that there should be a query. For, for the election management body, you outsource, there is a, you outsource election management to core members, university teachers and, and all of that. But there are core people who are also paid, whose job is to do this work before we started outsourcing. So within the context of what happened, what the ICES, Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security, what level of coordination was happening between the security agencies and INEC within the period of that election in a way that we don't get to this sorry pass that we are in. And so for me, it's about service delivery outcomes and consequences. And that is a place that we, are, we have a challenge in our country. We don't, we are not bothered. We will move on. We will, we will face it in, in another election. We will analyze it. But there is not going to be any audit. There is not going to be any consequence. There is not going to be any sanction. Well, as I want, thank you very much. Uh, you've already uh, lashed on to the issue of uh, why elections could not hold in uh, Ihiala local government area, and therefore having supplementary election. Where if you had uh, tens of uh, thousands of boots on the ground, uh, that's to say that nearly every square inch of Anambra was supposed to have been manned by security agencies. How come uh, security threats in uh, Ihiala then defeated? Uh, the purpose of the election on Saturday until you're not saying you're going to have uh, a supplementary election uh, scheduled for tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Vito Alufo, let, let's come back to you. This is not to uh, underestimate the intensity of, of the effort of the election management body and so on and so forth, but one often gets the impression 
that ahead of elections, of cycle of general elections, sometimes the electoral management body um, speaks with, let's say officials now, who speak uh, as though, you know, they were athletes, you know, like a boxer. Uh, before getting into the ring. There's a lot of uh, proposition for a fight. Said, no, I'm going to take you down in the third round. I'm going to take you down in the eighth round. Muhammad Ali, used to, hype. You know, Muhammad Ali used to do that uh, mm. uh, a great deal. You, 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 it, that's a lot of hype, a lot of sugar coating, and you raise expectations. And then on election day, you under deliver. Beavers, you know, it's been tested in Isoko by election and so on and so forth. Nothing's going to stop us. We know you've made a lot of, a lot of improvements, but why, why does the electoral management body talk big and then act small on critical issues? Um, well, I will not agree that we acted small uh, in the management of election in a number of states. <laughs> I don't think we acted so small at all. I think. Uh, given the situation we find ourselves, the build-up to that election, the tension, and all the arrangements we needed to make, the security uh, cover we needed, I think we, we, we managed the election uh, to a, a great extent, for me, to uh, what I would call, we had a pass mark. We are, not, we are not judging ourselves. We are not scoring ourselves. But it was not an easy thing, actually, for us to, to conduct election successfully in 20 local governments out of 21. It's not everything we can say on television, but truly, we had the type of constraints that made it impossible for us to deploy in here. This can be analyzed over and over again, that why? What are those constraints? Why did the security people not ensure that we were able to deploy? I think the, the security people will have to answer that question. You know, for us to, to conduct elections anywhere, elections are run by, by people. People also have their own fears. One thing we always say is that any time as an election official that you, are, you cannot, I mean, you are afraid of, of your own, of, of, your, of your life, about security of your life, you have issues, you don't deploy. Because it is better not to deploy than to come and say, we are sorry we lost 10 youth coppers. You know, that would be another story entirely. So we, we, we had to look at the whole situation. And truly, we were not able to deploy. I said we had staffing and logistics constraints that were caused by security threats. That is what, that is the position of the commission. We can analyze that one uh, privately. We can analyze it publicly. But that is the situation. And of course, there's no way the returning officer who uh, could conclude because, according to the law, he needed to have the definition of two thirds of, of, of 21, which is 14. And of course, for, uh, for her to be able to conclude the process, there is need to finish the election in Ihela. For a commission, we, we always ask for understanding of the public when we conduct elections. We go through a lot. It's not an easy thing to manage elections in, in a developing country. We talked about the beavers, the introduction of beavers. To a large extent, the beavers, the beavers uh, succeeded based on our own calculations and our own assessment, interim assessment. The beavers succeeded. There is no place to introduce a new technology uh, to that level where you will not have some, some challenges. The good thing is, did we, did we so, I mean, summon those challenges in time for majority of the voters to be able to exercise their franchise? The answer is yes, we did. We took certain actions that were necessary on election day. We, we, were, all, we were in the studio when the resident electoral commissioner addressed the press around 1.30 or 2 p.m. before the close of poll. Poll was supposed to close at 2.30. He extended the, the, the time to 4. And that enabled people who were there, who could not, I mean, who could not vote to be able to vote? Even in the polling unit of one of the, uh, the candidates, the leading candidate now, the polling unit, his polling unit, he was able to vote, and everybody there was able to vote. And the tension went down, and we were able to collate through the night. And of course, we have to follow the, the laws and regulations before we move further. We need to be fair to everybody. There's no perfect election anywhere. But I agree that certain things should not be happening 
in 2021. But then, as a country, I think we, I can say that we are really developing and we are making progress. INEC will go back and review the entire election, review what happened everywhere. We always do that. And that will guide us as we move to the next election, which is the FCT Area Council uh, elections, so that many of the issues that bedeviled us will be able to summon them more than this. What <laughs> kind of, what kind of, you know, critical analysis are you going to have on these issues that came up in the Anambra election? It's a test run, you know, to test for the apathy. Time is of essence in elections in Nigeria. The elections didn't start on time. People were talking of inadequate staff, the vivas not working well. Did you put into consideration before launching this technology the issue of network, power outage, and other issues that came up? Did you put it into consideration before testing it fully in Anambra State? The, the, the issues of the beavers was not general. It was only in a, a, a few places. We have the statistics, I don't have it here now, of the number of places where we had issues with beavers. And one thing happened that day, which many people didn't know. We said the other day that the software for beavers was developed in-house by our own ICT staff. And when we started having issues in, in places, in, in some places, those staff, those ICT staff moved into those places and, and, and performed an upgrade upgrade on, on those, on those uh, beavers equipment. They designed the software. They moved in and sort of made the necessary adjustments. adjustments. And those beavers equipment started working. We didn't, we, didn't, we didn't buy new beavers equipment on election day. We already had them. So in many places where we had, uh, uh, in the places where we had issues, those issues were resolved. That is one point we tried to make the public understand. <coughs> that it was not a general thing. We had, we had uh, more than 5,000 polling units. And of course, there's no way the equipment will fail in 5,000 polling units. We wouldn't have had any election. It failed only in a, fra in a fraction of, of, uh, of the units. And we surmounted that problem. And people were able to <coughs> do it. And I can assure you, the relative peace we're having in the number now is because, is because one way or the other, People were able to vote. And, of course, maybe what we are seeing is a reflection of their wish. Yeah. Uh, their wish. Th thank you, uh, Mr. Victor Aluko. I'm not trying to uh, make jest of the very serious effort that uh, INEC puts in uh, for various elections, whether off-cycle or otherwise. Because you say there will be a post we'll go back, we'll review and revise. If you uh, take a step back to 2015, the card reader that malfunctioned in the course of that election, former President Goodluck Jonathan uh, had challenges with being accredited. Uh, Soludo on Saturday had challenges. Uh, there were other persons who also had challenges. We've been doing review, review. Now we have Beavers. Beavers, it has been used for the second time. We are having issues. And then uh, again, review, review, review. I, I that we say will improve. I hope it doesn't sound, because I used the sports analogy earlier, it doesn't begin to sound like a uh, tennis player, Maria Sharapova. Uh, she's retired now. Uh, she had uh, many encounters with Serena Williams. She beat Serena Williams twice in 2004. Thereafter, it was Serena all the way. Uh, and each time Serena defeated her, subsequently said that she's, she has learned some lessons. So the next time, you know, she's going to improve. <laughs> until uh, she uh, hung her racket, uh, and that was it. But, but uh, Mr. Victor Aluko, we'll come back to you uh, to uh, drill into other aspects. We have been joined uh, by Zoom now uh, from Oka, the Anambra State Capital, once again, um, uh, this time by Frank Collins, Frank Collins, the Professor of Political Science at the Namde Azikiwe University, UNIZIC in Oka. Uh, Professor Collins, delighted to have you with us on Good Morning Nigeria today. Thank you. Good morning. Glad to be here. Uh, all right. Uh, give us your uh, assessment of the conduct of the governorship election in Anambra, which, of course, uh, is inconclusive at this point. Yeah, I must have to say that I'm personally very happy, you know, with a ton of events, you know, in terms 
of the nature of the election. Because before the election, you know, there were lots and lots of, um, you know, uh, issues that came up, discouraging for that matter. And uh, people were so, you know, uh, afraid. People were so uh, disinterested in whatever was happening. And uh, we were afraid that maybe we won't have turned up at all. But at the end of the election, we discovered that a lot of people took it upon themselves as true indigents of the state to come out and, uh, of course, uh, express themselves through the electoral process. So that particular one is really encouraging, and we are very happy about that. That is to say that an Ambrarians are so committed to the electoral process that an Ambrarians are special people, peculiar people, and people that are really, uh, uh, that always want to be involved in the democratic process, especially when it comes to selection of their leaders. So it is um, an encouraging one, and we are very happy for that. In as much as generally, you know, uh, uh, things didn't go the way we should, because by now we should have had the governor-elect, that's what we expected, because the election was free to a great extent. We went around, uh, monitored what was happening, and uh, we saw that in spite of the apprehension, that in spite of all those fears and other things, that uh, it was generally free to a great extent. Thank you. Professor Collins, thank you very much. I mean, considering the the tension in the lead up to the election, it's understandable that uh, voters still came out. But the turnout uh, from the figures we have, and even if you were to include all the registered voters in uh, Ihiala who are expected to go to the polls tomorrow, uh, the turnout is somewhat dismal. This probably could be less than 20%, uh, if you like, anything between 15 and 20%. And yet you say an Abrarians are enthusiastic about the democratic process. How would you have this kind of turnout and then uh, still be full of praise for a number of voters? Yeah, um, believe you me, if uh, what happened in Anambra was to happen in other places, you wouldn't even have 5% uh, uh, you know, participation. You know, because the, 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 the tension was so high, you know, uh, killings everywhere, people were running around, you know, people locking themselves inside their houses because of the situation. So, but uh, at the end of the day, we were surprised to even have the number we had. So for us, it shows the commitment of the people. Because ordinarily in other places, we wouldn't have had that particular number. And then uh, you should also understand that um, uh, even those that came out, many of them didn't vote. They couldn't vote because of the technical you know, problems we uh, experienced during the election. For instance, uh, this uh, issue of uh, divas, you know, they are, we are pulling units where almost half of the registered voters could not vote, you know, because of the, you know, malfunctioning of the divas. There were areas where those that came out, you know, they, they had picture problems. There were areas that uh, were so congested to the extent that even at, us, at 4 p.m. or whatever, a lot of people were still there struggling to vote. You know, a lot of things contributed to that number as recorded. You know, not everyone that came out was able to vote. But you know what democracy is. Democracy has to do with the majority. So we are using the number that was able to vote, you know, to, uh, to evaluate the general outcome of the election. So to us, uh, it shows uh, commitment. Commitment because if you are in Anambra, you will understand what I'm saying, the level of threat. And when IPOP also came up with their own threat, you know what IPOP is doing now. Uh, a lot of people was, we are very, very, you know, they were very, very, you know, uh, uh, uncomfortable with the whole situation until the threat was lifted, you know. So I'm um, saying that uh, the number you see or the number that turned out in that particular election 
shows that Anambra cannot be any other place. Believe you me. We know the situation as it is and as it was, and uh, we know what is happening around. Uh, Professor Frank Collins, Anambra State is like a testing ground for what, you know, preempting what 2023 would look like. Do you think what is happening in Anambra now is just like a synopsis? Hello? Can you hear me? No. I asked you a question. I said, Anambra is supposed to be like a testing ground for what will happen in the Southeast, you know, coming to 2023 elections. Is, is that, a, you know, what we are seeing in Anambra now, is that what we're going to see coming uh, when 2023 elections commences? Uh, no, uh, I don't think so because... Um, I believe that by 2023, a number of uh, issues must have been settled. I believe that before then that the federal government will be disposed to look into some of these issues that bothers, you know, on agitations, you know, uh, issues that bother on uh, national security, you know, all those issues that uh, normally discourage people from participating in election. We still have up to a year plus for uh, 2023. So I believe that the government is going to do a lot in terms of uh, providing conducive environment, especially in the Southeast. You know, what usually brings up some of these agitation, some of these tensions and whatever is that uh, a number of things are yet to be settled. You know, uh, the demands, you know, by the people of the Southeast, you know, is there. And uh, if the situation continues and if the issue is not addressed before 2023, uh, it may happen. But I believe that the government will be sensitive enough to look at those issues, dialogue, talk, and then provide what is uh, providable, you know, so that we have a very conducive environment in 2023. At the same time, you know, this election has taught people that at times there might be tensions without stories. You know, there was so much tension in Anambra, but at the end of the day, here we are, nothing happened. So it is very encouraging, and I know that by 2023, even if there will be tension, that the people will still know that nothing will happen and they will come out. So we are expecting a very, very uh, uh, encouraging, encouraging in parentheses, you know, turnout in 2023. And you know that 2023 is also very important to the Southeast. And uh, we believe that all things being equal, that the... Uh, candidates of all the major political parties will come from the East. And if that happens, then uh, every family will try to participate. Everybody will try to participate. And also the tension will go down, you know. And, uh, all right, uh, Professor, that... Collins, Professor Collins, uh, your bandwidth is uh, fluctuating. So we'll return to you once your bandwidth uh, gets uh, stronger. Now back to the studios, Ezra uh, Wangu. Uh, something, two points that I would like you uh, to speak to. One, of course, is the uh, pretty low uh, voter turnout. We always knew that uh, uh, Adam Brady, people will come out to register for uh, for uh, during the course of registration of voters. But when it comes to voting, uh, the turnout is usually very low. But this is apparently now a historic low. Uh, as it were. But uh, the argument about tension, you were in Anambra, and I, I recall when we had you last week, you did say that uh, the, the perception of, uh, of tension uh, and war uh, seemed to be more a view of outsiders than those who were inside. So, you, you see, let's speak that statistically, because it's also, when you say <laughs> kill people everywhere, these are very unstatistical indefensible terms, killing people everywhere. You could have a, a, a high-profile crime, like the, the killing of Dr. Akuyili, for instance. Okay? So that can send that very 
um, uh, uh, yes, can can become the. But it can't then be said that people are being killed everywhere. I, I think I have I have issues with that. But I, I I want to come first to the election proper. You compare, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry. You compare Anambra to Anambra. Apples to apples, mangoes to mangoes. History, 2013, 2015, 2019. Registered voters turn out. What, and in 2013, there was no tension. In 2017, there was tension. Because the no, no vote, no election, no referendum was in 2017, though it didn't come with the kind of intensity uh, in terms of propaganda that, that, that has followed it. But, so if you make that comparison, you will see that in 2017, the voter turnout for the gubernatorial election was within the presence of 22 to 25% of a two, 2 million voter um, registered. Regist 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 registered voters. In 2019, it was 29.2. In, in the State House of Assembly elections, it was... Of, of less of just about eleven percent. So in reality, you have a historically um, reference to tell you that the people are not they are not voting people. They are not. So all the effort that we are doing on this platform was to see whether we can get. In fact, I granted an interview where I said Anambrarians should disappoint Nigerians because it's already a notorious fact that you, are, you don't vote. You, we added 76,000 people to the voting register. Okay? 70, meaning 2.5 million people were registered to vote. And you, no governor of that state at any election has been voted by 300,000 people in any election since democracy. Now we are going to have a governor who will be elected even if you finish conclude this process, you, you, he may not be getting 200,000 people voting a governor in a voting strength of 2.5 million. It should worry the elites of that state. It should worry the educated people of that state. It should worry people <coughs> who come from a place that has given Nigeria a chino achebe, chukwe meko juku. And, 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 and the rest of them. No, they are Zikiwe. It should worry people who come from there that they, they, they can't understand the correlation of legitimacy, legitimizing the government that runs them through participation. And so, for me, it's not, it's not about uh, uh, whether... Go to, go to in, in, in places where there is insurgency. Go and check the statistics of elections, if you even want to make that comparison. Go to Borno and check what it was in the gubernatorial election where you have real insurgency. If you go to Yobe, check the statistics. Adamawa, check the statistics. So when we make, when we make these comparisons, we, we need to be clear that we, we understand first and foremost from a point of history to the to, to, to sociology of, of the elections. And let me tell you, the people of or the ordinary people of Anambra, where I observed the election in, in Enugu Agdi, in, in such other towns, they organized themselves. They came out, they were they were enthusiastic, they came out to vote. Let me tell you, you cannot be talking about vote trading, vote trading, voter inducement, where people are not where people are not excited. Because it is the value the politician places on that vote that makes him want to induce induce people. So in the Southeast, the bigger conversation should be about understanding what government is, what government can do, what democracy is. If you don't have democracy, what would be the alternative? Is the alternative for one individual, a, one person alone, to decide when I go out and when I don't go out? Is that, is that, is that democracy? How can it be? So these conversations are conversations that legitimize what is not, okay? People should come out and vote. Whatever the agitations is, we are not there yet. We are not the point, uh, at that point yet. We need to understand that we have a role in government, and our role in government is to participate in elections. Having said that, for the election management body, you were talking about <coughs> issues. You raised issues about expectation management. Mm -hmm. And... Listening to uh, Mr. Aluko, 
if this was the conversation pre the, before the election, it is a different tenor that, that you get. But when you say, yes, we know there are challenges, we have all contingency arrangements made, everything is going to be taken care of, you raise the expectations of people. When you fall below par, you apologize. You don't explain. You don't start expl explanations. And that's what we get in all elections. We explain away everything. Oh, you know, the challenges. We knew about the challenges. We knew the topography of the, <clears throat> and sociology of the place where we are going to organize the election. We knew. <clears throat> so if we have challenges, if there are drop, drop downs that could not allow our expectations to come true, what you do is to apologize. You don't explain it. What, so you so, think I next should apologize for not... If there are infractions, which are clear, because mm -hmm. first, first and foremost, you talk about transportation. Because if you listen to Dr. Oji, if you listen to Dr. Oji, he talked about the fact that they could not deploy because people, they paid money, um, you, you know, who they mobilized to, could not deploy. That was what he said in the press conference. Yes. And my take is, as an enthusiast, as an election enthusiast, is that I saw that in 2011, I saw that in 2015, I saw that in 2019. <laughs> I don't think we should continue to hoist regime of excuses for something we already know. There, is, there are other ways of solving that problem. Have we explored that other way in this whole process? Who has penalized when it happened in 2015? Did we get a, a, a rest report that the people who collected money have refunded the money? Did we get a, 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 a conversation around whether Breach of, <coughs> breach of contract. Mm. Breach of contract. So, <coughs> sorry, sorry we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, let, we'll take a break and enable you to take some water uh, you, so that uh, you, know, you can uh, rehydrate. Well, you, you're watching Good Morning Nigeria on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll continue with the conversation. Borno State in northeastern Nigeria still bears the scars of a decade of violent clashes between Boko Haram insurgents and the Nigerian army. Most of Bama, a town of 250,000 people, was damaged or destroyed. Many were forced to flee. Mariam Ibrahim was four when her father was killed by the insurgents as he tried to escape. <laughs> Since 2010, the region has been the epicenter of an insurrection led by the hardline Islamist movement Boko Haram. In 10 years, 350,000 people have died in this conflict. More than 2 million have been displaced. The head teacher of Mariam's school says the insurgency has led more people to discover the benefits of public education. When people fled to camps and to Maiduguri, many children enrolled in school for the first time. Almost every day, we are getting enrollment in each public schools in this, our local government, Burma. The European Union is one of northeastern Nigeria's biggest donors. Since 2015, it has allocated 322 million euros in humanitarian assistance to help people rebuild their lives. On top of that, more than 350 million euros has been provided to restore peace and security and basic services like education and health. Hundreds of permanent shelters in Bama were recently built thanks to EU support. Now we are proud to say 325 households now have a roof over their head, funded by the European Union.
The EU also finances safe space programs where young people can meet mentors and talk about important issues. Topic Dengawe Dai. Nutrition needs for adolescents. Yawa. Safe spaces like these are essential in a country where 40% of the population is below the age of 25. We have a health and life skill curriculum. We have many topics like menstrual hygiene, nutrition need for adolescent girls, and safe in a safe place, what is saving, and the way they will save their money regularly. They are still young. But we need them to know more before they will come adult. Hope, for Mariam and her six sisters, lies in education. Despite everything they have lived through, people here still hope for a brighter future. It's a fragile hope, however. While education is key, people here face other challenges. Hunger stalks millions in Borno and the Lake Chad Basin as the conflict takes its toll on fishermen and farmers unable to access the water and land. Welcome back from that uh, short break. Uh, we still have our guests with us in the studios here in Abuja, as well as Zoom uh, from uh, the University of, uh, from Oka, that's Namdu Azikwe University, where Professor Frank Collins is. I, I, I just want to come back to uh, SN1 Wangu. Uh, part of the point you, you were talking about, the low turnout of voters in, uh, in Anambra, uh, help our viewers understand. There's a question I'll, I'll also pose to Professor Frank Collins. How then do you reconcile the intra-party acrimony ahead of the elections, as by way of primaries and who gets to become the candidate, litigation, and so on and so forth, versus at the end of the day, the people that will come out to elect you are actually just a finger full. I mean, in this case, uh, we're looking at anything, if, if to be generous, probably 15, uh, 15, 18 percent of voters. How do you reconcile this? And it's a historical fact. Uh, it, it has been said now that uh, the number of uh, votes that the governor, our going governor, got in 2017 will be over and above the number of votes that have been cast in this whole election. So why all that fight uh, to become a candidate? And there seem to also have been no concomitant effort to mobilize voters to say, oh yeah, we are now the candidates, come out and vote for us. Kisley, it's, it's always been about the same things that we've overflogged here, about first is this, the structure and nature of leadership recruitment to the political parties. Uh, the political parties in Nigeria, because uh, sometimes it's the same people who are in the, all over the place. They, the, the nature of movement is so fluid that you can't really say who is a member of a political party. In the primaries of the, those <coughs> political parties, a candidate won, uh, is said to have won his primary with 200 and something thousand votes. The other one, the other one won with 200. And, so meaning that if you put all the primaries that happened in that state and the figures that sure. were banded, but what that tells you is that, in reality, it's the same human beings who, who are moving from one place primary to the other, to <laughs> one primary to another. It, and I've, I've given the joke, and I keep giving the joke, of how I went to train in this same state uh, for, for an organization. And I, I stood there while they were registering, and they didn't know I was, I was a native, you know. So they, they were asking the, the, somebody will take his phone and call somebody and say, which party should I write? 
and is a training for political parties. The man who has come for a political party is in front of the registration desk, calling somebody somewhere and asking him which party should I, should I. So it, it tells you the story of the political organization, political mobilization structure that we are running. Uh, generally. And that is why it defies everything that they cannot have nominal rule. That every attempt at biometric um, uh, registration of party members collapses. Because at, once you get to that point, you find out that it's the same man who is in the register of this party that is also in your own, <laughs> in your own register. And the people who do it know, they understand it. So it's, it's, a, cartel, it's a small group of people who have continued to run. But Anambra is even more interesting. Because it's, litigious, it's a litigious community. They litigate over uh, President General of their community, up to Supreme Court. So it's, it's not something that is, even, even the village associations, uh, they, they go to court over, over that. So if you notice now, the psychology is being framed. There is a framing that is going on that it is the court that will end <laughs> this 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 this, uh, this, inconclusive, this election. inconclusive election. We will go to court, not because they don't know that the processes that have led to this may are transparent, are credible and fair. They know, but because consistently over a period of time they have used the courts to resolve, you know, political issues. It, it's become a culture. It's become something that they so. Um, it is, it is mind bogging to, to even understand why it is difficult for, with that strength, that uh, voting strength, for you to continue to have this uh, administration. We can hoist all the regime of excuses that we can find, you know, poverty, uh, lack of infrastructure, and all of that. In the places where people are voting, their infrastructure is not, is not, is not, uh, the, is not the best in the world. But People realize that the more you stay away from government, the more you give a tiny few the opportunity to control your life and determine things. I, I, for the past uh, two months, three months, we've been in and out of. And at every point in time where we are doing this training, I ask, and most of them are graduates, I ask how many of you have know the budget of your state? If you have 100 people that you are talking to, not one person. Not one. There's something that is dangerous about that. It has something to do with civic education. It has something to do with the kind of even voter education that is conducted. Is it missing uh, in Anambra? Voter education? No, voter education. education as a ritual. You know, we, we, we do ritual, ritualistic voter education. So election is coming, uh, get your PVC, uh, you know, all of those things. It, you create awareness, but it does not deepen understanding of governance. It does not deepen the relationship between the citizen and government. It does not deepen how the budget, how, for instance, Anambra has a budget of 144 billion for 2021. Let's say it realizes 100 billion out of that. It is in that place that your water is coming. It is in that place that your school is coming. So if you are not interested and you don't even know what is in that document, the man who you who controls it now determines what you, he gives you or what and anything he gives you you clap because you don't even know what is in the document that that uh, of expectation that you should have from him so we have a big challenge in terms of reorganizing and then governance for instance I, I keep talking about it. You have ministers, you have House of Assembly members, you have those are representatives. You call them representatives. Representatives of who? Of the people. What does it mean to represent them? It means that you don't need election to go home and talk about Ruga, livestock transformation agenda. You don't need election. You can call your people and say, government is talking about livestock transformation agenda. This is what it means for you. In a town hall meeting, not the, not the, uh, um, um, you know, get get that kind of arrangement. The House of Rep member who is in Abuja, his work is not to be running and be claiming that there is insecurity. He can't go home. He cannot talk to anybody. But so he has to go home, 
and discuss, make this conversation. So you leave it for civil society, the media. When they talk, they say the media is not doing enough. Uh, civil society people are not doing enough. The people who have responsibility to do that don't do it, won't do it. Nobody asks them to do it, except the last time the president were telling the ministers, go home. Go and talk to your people. Yeah, that was at the end of uh, uh, SARS. Uh, 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 SARS. Go home and talk to your people. <clears throat> Do you need a president to tell you to go? That's why you have 49 ministers, which means every state must have one minister. And that's why they say that if you remove him, they say they have removed an Igbo person. But in representation, he does not represent the Igbo. He represents himself. That representation is go home, talk to your people, educate them, let them understand. If we do that, some of these abysmal um, numbers that we have during the election will not be there because more and more people will understand, more and more people will get excited, more and more people will understand the value of... So it's not just about resources, it's not just about infrastructure, it's also about communication, and alignment. about representation and alignment. Is it because the people feel they, are not the, the, they have a party? that is not aligned with the federal government? Is that no, the reason why they feel... The they there feel... No party. Let's, let's stop pretending about these things. See, the same people who are in this party are the ones who are in this party. In that, that Anambra, people left one party, joined this party. In the next one week, with the results that you are seeing now, they will go back. No sanctions, no quarrel, no anything. So how do you become a member of a political party? It, there is something that gives you identity as a member of your beliefs, your ideology, what you stand for. Get the, the person who is in APC, PDP, APC, ABGA, everything. What do you stand for? What is your thinking about housing? What is your thinking about education? What is the PDP idea is in their manifesto, is in their, their, their documents. But the people who sign into that party have no understanding and relationship with those documents and what it represents for them. All right. Ezra, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Petro, let's bring you back into the conversation. Uh, earlier, Ezra said, look, we are often full of uh, high-rise excuses when things go wrong instead of apologies because uh, the electoral management body in this instance fails to manage expectations. Um, I, I was telling him um, when the camera was off that yesterday when I was, I was on uh, the other program, the, the Anambra Decides uh, program, that on behalf of the commission, we apologize to those voters that could not vote in time, that had issues. We apologize to them as a commission. We own up. We, we didn't hide anything. It's all thing was in the open. We owned up to the, to the problems that arose, and we also, we also acknowledge the fact that we were able to summon those problems, and those people were able to vote. And we even talked about the particular polling unit, where one, one of the major candidates, where one of the candidates was not able to vote in time, and eventually he voted, and everybody there voted. And even after he voted, he, he, he became less vociferous in terms of criticizing the system. And so what I'm saying is we owned up the fact that in some places we had problems. We didn't, we didn't just try to explain everything off like that. We're a very humble organization. After all, if there are no voters, we will not have any work to do. But don't you think Nigerians need to know, need to hear from you? Don't you think? Of course. We'll be talking to Nigerians. The resident electoral commissioner has spoken how many times now? In one day, he addressed the press twice. The returning officer is, a, is an official of the commission. He spoke yesterday uh, uh, during, during, the, 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 during the collation. And of course, as a commission, various officials of the commission are speaking. What I'm saying is, <coughs> we are, elections belong to the people. I mean, elections belong to the people. And we must always uh, be conscious of the fact that as an electoral body, our responsibility is to the people. We don't shy away from that responsibility. Where we make mistakes, we don't cover our mistakes. We, we say it the way it is, that we made a mistake here, and this is what we have done to rectify that mistake. Okay, what is it that, from the Commission's own perspective, that you did right and you planned for this and it actually worked? Let's have some chest beating from you. What we did was that we, we tried our best to stop voter impersonation. That was one major thing we needed to stop in this country. And we were bold enough to deploy that new technology. When we were using card readers, 
the politicians look for ways to sidetrack the, the, the issue of uh, use of carrier. We knew how we had to bring incident forms, and we knew how sabotage was part of the whole show, nationwide. And in many places where even the carriers were working, they, they, they were able to compromise some officials who we say the carriers are not working, so that uh, incident forms would be used. And we needed to stamp out that system of accreditation. If you look back to our history, you remember 1989, um, 1990, when Wosu was, was, was chairman of, uh, of NEC, of NEC then, mm. and he came with open ballot, open all. That is, you know, just trying to determine who are actually the voters in the polling unit. As a commission, we have been battling this issue of fighting voter impersonation since then. I can remember since then. And when we brought in cardiacs, when uh, Professor Jaga brought in cardiacs, it was to be able to stop impersonation. That is, your fingerprints must be authenticated before you can, you can, you can vote. And of course, we were, we were forced to begin incident forms. And of course, we knew that we had to find a way to stop these forms. After all, as an election body, if, if people are not supposed to vote, start voting. It doesn't make us happy. Or people voting many times. You have some people voting many times. You have people boasting that they have up to five PVCs in their, in, in, in their care. So we had to find a way as a commission to stop all that. A society must develop. And we must contribute to the development of that society in our own humble way. And of course, the resources we're getting to be able to bring in new technology comes from the public post. It comes from the public post, <coughs> and all we are doing is to be able to stop voter impersonation so that at the end of the day, it will be one man, one vote. And everybody will be, will be confident that, yes, this election is credible. We, we, we will be calling credible elections. We want the elections to be more credible. Okay. I was just wondering, Mr. Aluko, uh, this is probably, we're having a conversation on the public broadcast. Uh, outlet so this may sound like some free consultancy when, when, when you are introducing new technology as the card reader was and now beavers the pilot arrangements that the commission makes must it be uh, in a political contest couldn't it, it, the technology for beavers you said the software was designed by your own yes, engineers yes, kudos yes. to them and uh, that's the way to go there's no point saying look go and source this thing from outside but I, I don't know. Uh, you have big union elections. I mean, Labour Congress is not holding an election now. Uh, but you have big unions. You have big associations. You could do this quietly with them and then test it there. And then see, let the, let the engineers see what works, what doesn't work. It is not, because we know the value of elections in Nigeria, it is not when you're having a political election that you say, okay, go and deploy this in Isoko, and then people start complaining, and then you're having... All kinds of uh, all kinds of complaints, but as I said, I mean this is an off the cuff uh, uh, remark that I'm making. But I, I just tell us what happened in Orumba North, because it was embarrassing uh, that the returning officer uh, said all that he said that his life was at risk, and that those whom he thought were his uh, support uh, uh, staff turned out uh, to be uh, against him, and that. Uh, he signed the result on that jurors. In the meantime, the INEC official was lambasting uh, the returning officer for being, in, 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 in the manner of speaking, incompetent and, and not useful uh, for that particular purpose. Why would, assuming that is the case, uh, why would INEC deploy somebody who is incompetent for uh, the purpose of being a returning officer in local government? Or why would uh, the uh, returning officer make the allegation that... Uh, the, the, the staff and other aides were actually conspirators with the violators of the rules. Well, we, uh, we, we were not there in Norumba North when the Royal Rumble <laughs> was taking place between the, the coalition officer and the, and the INEC electoral officer. But what we could see when the returning officer was collating was that she did the right thing by by setting up an, uh, an emergency team to review, to review the uh, form EC8, I think form EC8B, uh, and form EC8B uh, uh, that was submitted by that coalition officer. And of course, they reviewed the, 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 the whole team, rearranged the whole team positively, reported back to the coalition center, and she was able to, of course, uh, move forward. We, for now, until we interrogate them, we will not really know what happened 
on ground until we interrogate the coalition officer who was making, making some allegations and until we interrogate the electoral officer who was alluding to the fact that the coalition officer was inexperienced. But one thing is sometimes, you see, we recruited, we recruited many coalition officers. And of course, we recruited intellectuals from the academics for the local government uh, uh, what coalition position. But sometimes, sometimes when people have to perform such important duties, some people will not be, may not be so good in, in uh, mathematics or arithmetic. So we, why recruit we, them? No, they were trained. Uh, yeah, they, so we if, recruit and tra we recruit and if train you, them if properly. If you recruit and train, I don't want to give us anyone the opportunity no, to respond no, no, to no. because he no, had. What I'm saying. He, sorry, Mr. Aluko. Sorry, because he had uh, harped on this sometime in the past. That uh, I'm sorry, you know, some some of the scholars you bring on for electoral election duties uh, embarrass themselves uh, on camera. So if if you're not good at arithmetic, why go uh, to take up the job of a coalition officer? Well, not even mathematics now, just simple arithmetic, add, add, add. And you have the adding machine on your, on your, on your, on your, on your lab there to use. Mr. Aluko, we know that we have the opportunity of returning to a number of these issues uh, on Good Morning Nigeria, and we hope you'll oblige us. But just to bring in again uh, Professor Frank uh, Collins via Zoom from Oka in uh, Anambra State. Uh, Professor Collins, uh, as briefly as you possibly could do this for us, what happened in Ihiala? Was it foreseeable? Uh, and if so, uh, how come the security agencies, I mean, that's for them to respond to anyway, uh, couldn't anticipate that threat and they know how to contain it? Yeah, thank you very much. I think that what happened uh, in Ihiala is just one of these. Um, problems we usually have during elections. You know, on election day, you know, politicians always try to maneuver and uh, tweet the others. So what happened in Ihiala was a case of, uh, uh, it was a conflict to some extent of uh, contending interests because uh, the politicians were so desperate, knowing the, the, the nature of that terrain, knowing the voting strength of that terrain, so they were trying to make sure that uh, uh, nobody wins. Nobody wins there, you know, because we got information that uh, some people were trying to make sure that there will be a rerun in Ihiala to enable them, you know, uh, manipulate the electoral process at the end of the day. So it wasn't a case of incompetence per se. It wasn't a case of uh, people not being aware or people not being there. So it was, to me, it was a calculated attempt by some politicians to make sure that uh, certain people do not win in that particular area. So now that a rerun has been set or a kind of supplementary election, um, they think that uh, they now have better opportunity to appeal to the people better opportunity to hijack the process, and of course, better opportunity to, to, to win the election. Some say that some of the politicians wanted to know what the outcome of the election will be in some other areas, you know, trying to employ what happened in Egypt and some other places, so that during the election, they will have a better opportunity to have it all through. So, but when you look at some of these things, you see that, uh, um, they are not necessarily important because uh, the people must always determine who will become, you know, their leader. The people will always uh, like to say what they have in mind with regards to, to, to whoever is contesting. But here, a number of people are trying to lord it over others. And for those of us in Anambra, we do understand the, the, the nature of that particular local government with regards to the electoral outcome, because uh, it is at the border area of the state. And you know that a lot of people also can easily come from other states into the state uh, to participate during the elections. We had that in the past. And uh, from what is happening now, I think that um, the political parties and their candidates are just trying to see how they can handle the situation. 
And the security agents that we are there, I think that we have enough security agents, you know, uh, because around here. Okay, Professor Frank Collins, um, we're running out of time. Actually, we would like to appreciate your input. You know, and the conversation, you know, insight into the conversation today. Uh, professor Frank Collins, a professor of political science at the Inamdi Aziku. <coughs> well, all right, Juba, my colleague, sorry about that. Uh, we, uh, of course, we thank uh, Professor Frank Collins, Inamdi Aziku University. We thank you. As the one, one group, we also like to appreciate you for uh, being uh, our guests uh, this morning. Victor Aluko, uh, Director of Voter Education of INEC. Uh, we thank you also for being on uh, Good Morning Nigeria today. Let's see which of our segments we're able to take uh, just uh, before we uh, wrap up. If we have sports or foreign, uh, we just might take any one of those and then uh, continue uh, before we sign off. Uh, in the 74th minute when Okirike sprung the offside trap on the ball over the top and kept his school to beat Patricio after a little step over. The win saw Venezia alt a run of three consecutive league fixtures without a victory. In mixed martial arts, welterweight champion Kamaru Usman retained his title with a unanimous decision win against Colby Covington in their rematch at the UFC 268 in New York. Covington rallied in rounds three and four and the pair traded heavy shots in the fifth without either able to land a fight-ending blow. The judges scored it 48-47, 48-47, and 49. All right, so that's it for us on Good Morning Nigeria today. On behalf of my colleague, Juma Yusuf, uh, it's all right, and uh, all the other members of the production crew, we thank you for tuning in. The program returns tomorrow, same time, 7 o'clock in the morning. Until then, do take care of yourselves. I'm Kingsley Osadolo. I was with you, man.